So I got an email that says that there is a new Gen 5 NVMe SSD out there that is going to be disrupting the market. And then a few days later, this box arrived. And when I opened it, I can see that there's something interesting inside. It doesn't have a label on the top, but then the review guide has some seriously impressive results, what I should be getting. And in the process of reviewing this SSD, I discovered something very interesting. And I think you want to hear this. I've got good news for you. Don't you love it when you get paid for spreading? the good news. It's about Intel Core Ultra 7265K. It has had a very attractive price reduction, making it a great cost-effective and high-performance solution for creators, gamers, and professionals. If you're into video editing, then this is especially good news for you because of the iGPU inside there that will enable you to have hardware acceleration, media playback, and encoding on the timeline, which means you'll have very smooth timeline experience with your H.264 and 5 and media, regardless of which dedicated GPU you're running on your PC. Oh, and now with the boost profile, you can get extra performance and the native memory support goes up to 8,400 mega transfers per second. It's a perfect best bang for buck CPU for creators, whether you're doing photo, video, 3D, AI. Check it out in the video description below and thank you Intel for sponsoring this part of the video. So what I'm talking about is this Fizen E28. This is a very interesting thing. So this is kind of like a reference design and you don't really buy this from the shop but they kind of showcase what they're able to do. Fizen usually makes the controllers for the SSDs and then some other manufacturers can kind of have this design in here or actually just take their reference design and kind of buy this off Fizen and then say that hey we're you know SSD manufacturer we're doing this because not every brand out there has the capabilities of actually manufacturing this themselves the chips and everything so they buy this in. Now what you can see in here is basically this is the E28 controller that bit here is DRAM cache we're using SK Hynix in there. I can see that SK Hynix label right in there. And then these two are then the NAND chips. And here you have the flash. Now, this is the two terabyte model. Knowing that, I know that one of this is one terabyte and this is a second terabyte. Underneath, we don't have anything and you are able to get four terabytes of this as well, which I'm assuming then at that point, you will have two plus two terabytes on the top there. And then in the front here, you've got two other like little Fizen chips. They're very, very, very small. I'm not sure if you can see what Fizen is written on them. One of them is the PCI signal and then the other one PCI power. And because this is a reference design, there's something that I've never seen on an SSD before. Underneath here, there is like two more headers. I don't know if this is a testing header or something like that. So one of those ribbon cables can be connected into there. Obviously, I have no idea what you want to do with this, but I guess if you are a manufacturer, you want to test it or kind of configure it to something you want to do, you can do interesting stuff with it. You might be wondering, why is there so many CPUs out there? Because I did the CPU video, which is the best CPU for different programs. If you haven't seen them, check that one out. But while reviewing this, I actually discovered something very interesting. The review guide that Fison sent across what you really see the Fizen E28 actually compared to some of these other drives out there. The thing is, if you look at this here, the throughput is faster than any of the other ones. So E26, there that's the previous version. We've got the Samsung 9 100 Pro, WD, SN8 100, Kingston Renegade. We've tested that one. That was amazing. We've tested all of these here. They were The only ones I haven't tested is the WD. And interestingly, this Fizen should be the fastest. And when we're looking at the latency test, Obviously latency, the lower it is, the better it is. Here again, the Fizen E28 has got the lowest latency compared to all the rest of them. That's the only one I haven't tested yet, but I have tested some of the other ones and more that is not mentioned in here. And then when I saw the actual PC Mark 10 comparison that was sent across as well, then you can see here, Fizen E28 is supposed to be the fastest thing that is there since sliced bread. We're faster than the SN8 100, Samsung 9 100 Pro, and then the Renegade. And that made me really excited. Come on, let's test this thing and then see the results. Before I'm gonna show you the results, I'm gonna share something that I found or was kind of said by someone after I shared my results with Fizen because I got something different and I didn't know that this thing actually existed. Let me read you this. So this is from John Coulter from TweetCon. This is what it says. AMD has already enabled a large payload transfer over PCIe on their client systems. So that is why you can reach 15 gigabytes per second 
on that platform. Intel has only enabled this feature on the server and workstation chipsets. All of the Intel client chipsets do not have this feature, so you are limited to around 14.2 gigabytes per second with large block size sequential transfers. Making matters worse, the latest Intel chipset has issues with dedicated M.2 slot that hurts random performance. You will see massive difference in random performance using the new Z890 with the M.2 slot, but not if you use a PCIe Gen 5 add-in card. All of that said, Intel has significantly less latency than AMD on PCIe slots. This is why you see Intel Z790, not the new Z890 on the M.2 slots, reach up to 140 megabytes per second in random reads at Q1T1 in Crystal Disk Mark. Without extensive tuning of the OS and BIOS, AMD is limited to around 85 megabytes per second and with the extensive tuning around 100 megabytes per second. If you test the Crucial T700 and T705 on an AMD board, the real-world performance PCMark 10 3D Mark storage is nearly identical. Several years ago, Intel and WD released a white paper about low Q-depth random reads. Both companies had their employees put a data logger on their company notebooks so they had thousands of real-world results. The test showed conclusively that QD1 random reads make your computer feel fast. That is why I made this a focus when I came to Fizen after 20 years at Tom's Hardware, Tweak Town and Hard OCP. This is also confirmed with PC Mark 10 and 3D Mark storage traces of real world software. I'm also a consultant for UL, formerly FutureMark, and helped develop both. AMD is at a disadvantage in low Q depth random read performance, which is why an AMD feels sluggish when you run both systems side by side. I can tell you AMD is working on this IO issue and I have weekly calls with them, but it's not an issue that can be fixed with a simple firmware update. Why this is interesting is because I am using an AMD X870E test platform for the Gen 5 NVMEs. I'm using the dedicated M.2 slot that goes directly to the CPU, that's the Gen 5 slot, and a 9950X 3D CPU, like the best CPU you could get for this latest Windows, latest everything software. And now let's take a look at some of these results then. Firstly, when we're looking at the sequential read and write speeds, you can see that this Fizen E28 in sequential read is the absolute fastest drive ever in the top of the charts. Not by much, but it is the absolute fastest. Obviously, you can see that there are the Gen 5 drives that are on top of the charts. So these bits here are on a whole nother level. Then we've got an extra other Gen 5 kind of lower ends or maybe a little bit older first gen Gen 5 drives there. And then obviously all of the Gen 4 drives, they're just like a big blank in there and then kind of fall off of the lower Gen 4. When we're looking at the right sequential write speeds, I know these are not particularly, you know, real world. No one can actually get this bandwidth in there, but in some of the cases it is possible and in data centers and actual uh, servers, this might be very, very uh, important data here. We are right on the top there, sharing within 1% of the best drives that you could get. So that shows that this drive can perform very, very good. But then let's move on to some real world benchmarks. And here, what you can see is the quick system drive benchmark for PC Mark 10. So this tests the drive as a secondary drive, not the operating system drive, not heavy use, but if you pop it in in a secondary drive and try to use it that way, which drives are the best. What we can see on the top here, bear in mind, I deleted kind of some of the lower end drives to make these graphs a little bit more readable. You can see on the top there are the, the best drives. And then there's the secondary drives in there that kind of perform in the same blank. So the Fizen E28 2 terabyte here is actually about 4.5% slower. So it is a little bit slower than the top part, but at the same time performs very, very similar than like the Gen 4 Kingston Fury that we have in there. And that's within 1%. So this whole section here is kind of 1% difference. It's performing very, very good, but I wouldn't say it's the best drive out there. Moving on to data drive benchmark, where we're testing it more, a little bit more of a storage uh, solution where we're putting more data on there. And you can see there is kind of two top sections there. Obviously the best ones there, Crucial T705, and then the Z540 from Team Group. Then we've got like the second best option there. And that's where Fizen really relies there as well. So in light usage and kind of just using this as a storage, the Fizen is 
very very good and performs very very well right on the top there within a couple of percent so this data drive there is about 3.8 percent slower which is not bad at all now moving on to one of my favorite benchmarks which is the full system drive benchmark and i'd argue that this is the most important one where you would use the drive as the operating system and programs so really you need to have a drive that has really fast random read and write speeds all over the drive and that will give you the best performance and here we can see that on the top there my kingston fury renegade g5 test they were just absolutely smashing it and they were kind of like in a ballpark on their own they're about five percent ahead of the rest of the pack and then comes the rest of the pack that i would call this bit here and this is where the samsung 99100 pro and then the four terabyte and then the Fizen e um, are in the same one. Even the SK Hynix P51 Platinum, they're all in this park within 1-2% and that's very very impressive. But at the same time, it's not the fastest drive what I have tested. I know that the WD8100 is also very very impressive. I haven't tested this yet. WD, if you're watching this, I'd love to make this happen. But at the same time, it is it is quite impressive. This crucial T705, four terabyte drive, and then the two terabyte drive, both of them lower than the Fison, so that's impressive. Now, moving on to the drive consistency test, and this tests the drive in a very, very heavy workload. It writes over 20 terabytes of files on it, fills the drive multiple times, and the test lasts about 20 hours to really see if you hammer this drive in a very long test, how well does it perform? And if you're a creator, the importance of this test is where you're using this as a project drive. You're shooting lots of 8K raw footage that has very, very large file sizes and you're constantly hammering this, either loading onto it or reading off to it. How well does it perform? Even at that point, it's not gonna be as intense as this test, but this really shows if we stretch the drive, who can actually keep up with it. And here I had to extend the graph to more because the Fizen really isn't impressive and kind of falls short in here. And I'm not sure why this is happening. This is not very impressive results as well. Look at this. This here next to it is a Solidime P44 Pro. That's a Gen 4 drive, half the capacity. This tests usually when you have larger capacities and if you have DRAM cache, they perform a lot better. As you can see on the top there, we've got four terabyte drive the t705 two terabyte is amazing there really but as you can see these two here the large capacities the first one terabyte one there is at this point all of the rest is higher than one terabyte this here with the two terabytes that really falls right on the bottom there look the sn5000 at four terabytes is not far away from it right there that's not impressive. The WD SN850X is faster there. It's, it's a little bit of a disappointment, especially when you look at this bit here, which is the SK Hynix P41. That's the Gen 4 drive, not the Gen 5 drive. The Gen 5 drive is there. That is quite a bit lower. So in the consistency test, it doesn't work really, really well. Now, another thing that is obviously interesting is the power consumption and here um, here's some of the ones that Fison gives there there's competitor s and i assume this is samsung i don't know which which one this is but they probably don't want to show exactly who they're comparing this basically what they're saying is slightly lower wattage and that's all so what this means is if you've got a lower wattage m.2 ssd it means that it's not going to be as hot and it's easier to cool and so on so in this point they're doing quite a good job in here. And then the idle power wattage here, this is the Fizen E28. You can see it's lower than the rest of them. Obviously their previous generation, the E26 is quite a bit higher. And then the 9100 Pro Samsung, who also boasted lots about their uh, very, very low power consumption is actually higher than what we can see here from Fison. The WD SN8100 is very, very close. It's only 0.1 watts higher, which is not much, but if you get multiple of these drives, it all adds up. So the conclusion here is, interestingly, I didn't know that there is a latency issue, and I'd love to know if you have experienced this kind of a latency struggle with Intel and AMD, and if AMD stuff kind of feels just sluggish because they're is latency more on AMD's compared to Intel side. Then looking at the E28, I'm loving that we're getting more competition in the PCI Gen 5 game. Is this really a disruptor into the market? Well, kind of. I'd love to see more actual brands who utilize this design unless Fizen actually just starts to sell it out there and would love to have eight terabyte versions as well. But at the moment, 
I'm seeing that the full system benchmark is a little bit slower than what of the rest of the things what I'm seeing out there. Did you see that my test results in here are completely different than what they are getting? Obviously, they tested this with their Intel platform. I have AMD platform. So that shows that depending which platform you use, you might get completely different results. Never knew that. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to know from you. And if you want to reach out, reach out to my next. I'll always get back to you within 24 hours. There's PC build guys in the description below. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.